Before it's the Anything Goes podcast, man, it's your boy, Sean Peoples. Hey, people, if you like our vibes, you like the movement, like, subscribe, share. Comment in the comment section, man. Ring the notification bell so you can keep up with everything that we got going on, man. Jump in the community tab and vote on all the situations and issuations that you see going on up there. It's just a gauge for us to give you better content. So help us help you by giving y'all better content. And don't forget, we're on the road to 5K, man. When we reach 5K, we're going to give away some prizes, some cash. And you won't know that we hit the road to 5K unless you ring the notification bell. So you need to get that taken care of. Yeah, man, I'm here with uh, Bad Joe. The girls, them say, oh, you're Bad So. Uh, <laughs> What's going on there? <laughs> yeah. Everything cool? Everything yeah. good, man. Everything good. Uh, well, Bad Joe come from the VI, the VA. Hmm. Bad Joe been running the, uh, the music. On the radio, been running the club scenery around here for years, years and years. So, Bajo, we'll start to get into the music first. Tell the people in what part, which, which part of the Virgin Islands you're from. All right, I'm from St. Thomas. You know, there's three Virgin Islands. Well, let's just say three islands in the Virgin Islands. It's St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John. But I'm from St. Thomas. And I grew up in the state Thomas, you know, which is kind of mid between town and country yeah. on the west side. So, that's where I grew up at. That's still Thomas, you know? Yeah. And and then, so, uh, go ahead. I was saying, so growing up there, the in-between town and country, so it leads you to be able to, uh, like, get the bo- best of both worlds, I would say. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Like, so I used to pretty much walk everywhere, you know? I mean, like, right, right smack in the middle, you know what I mean? Be- between, like, you know, east side and west side, like, right in town. Ta- Estate Thomas is, like, neutral, like, right in town, like, kind of sort of almost in town, but like right there, you can walk the town from there, but you can't walk from country, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it's like right smack in the middle, but like right like right there, like in the middle, you know what I'm saying? Where the cool ships come in at the dock, it's like where, where, where you live at, you know? Yeah. So what what brought you from the VI to VA? Well, the thing is, though, um, I went to college, right? And I ain't gonna lie to you, man. When I finished high school, I was like, yo, that's it. I ain't doing nothing else. But my mother told me, like, I was in a room fixing something, putting stuff together. I should go to school for electronics. I really wanted to go to school for mechanics. You know, she said, nah, you don't want to do that. Just go ahead. Yeah, I was putting things together, go to school for electronics. So I went here and I went to, I went to Norfolk State. And I ended up getting two degrees in Associates in Industrial Electronics and a BS Electronic Technology. And that's how I ended up here in Virginia, doing electronics, you know. So that's how I ended up doing it, you know. That's a good move, good move. So you're a, you're a Spartan. Yes. You're a Spartan. And it's your Spartan. Yes. Yeah. Green and gold. You know behold it. Yeah. Behold the green <laughs> and gold. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. So with with uh, with, with with being in VA, man, you know, when I mm. first came to VA, I heard mm. about you. I heard about some other, um, you know, I'm also a selector. So I heard about other uh, DJs and selectors here. But you're one of the first I hear about from... From old to young, everybody know who uh who Bajo was. So tell tell the people how you got into music and how you know your journey well, with being a DJ. Well, okay, well, it all started back home in St. Thomas, right? Um, I started playing music about eleven years old from my cousin at Shield. He had a little setup inside his house, and I went over there. He showed me how to do little different things here and there. But when I went to high school, now my aunt boyfriend at the time named Zeus. He was DJ in a club and he was a big popular DJ back home. So he took me under his wings and I started at about 16 years old playing in a club with him at 254 back home. And that's why I really got started, like actually like doing stuff. I was 16 years old, I didn't even want to be in a club. And he used to sneak me in there early and I used to go in there and DJ with him. And that's how I really did it. And the funniest thing is though, we played everything back home from freestyle, 80s music. I mean, you name it, we play back in the club. You know, and that's how it really started back in St. Thomas. And then when I came up here to Norfolk State, I was done with it because I had to go to school. It's either pretty much buy books or buy records. So yeah. I had to buy the books. Is that coming from? But anyway, one day um, walking on campus, my friend um, Melvin walked up to me and said, yo, um, Melanie want to talk to you. Talk to me for what? You know, as a girl he was doing... Um, mass communication with at Norfolk State. Mm. And apparently she was graduating and she wanted to know how to DJ and know how to mix. So I said, okay, cool. I, I teach her how to mix and everything. So I was teaching her they, the show was called a good job we back then. And it was like Saturday nights at Norfolk State from I think about 
it's a while ago. I can't remember the time, but it was like late. It was like, oh yeah, nine to 12 at my time, right? And then I signed off or whatever. But anyway, I helped her do that. And then she was, you know, she got it, but then she graduated. And they're like, yo, we want you to do this show. Like, nah, I ain't trying to do all that. Now I'm saying, I was trying to go to school and do what I gotta do and graduate. And I had the Beijing thing, and I ain't really paid attention to that right now. So anyway, she ended up graduating and up doing this show. So the show was doing so good. It was on Saturday nights, then it moved to Friday nights too. It gave me two nights to play with the music. You know, Mr. Turner back then, he was a PD. And um, actually he was a um, station manager, actually. Yo. He said, look, you know, I want you to do the show. And that's how I ended up started doing the show in Norfolk State. And that was back in 1990. Mm. So, and that's why I ended up started doing it. So on the side, I would do that, you know, once I was going to school on the weekends, I'll do Friday and Saturday nights, you know, the thing called the reggae jamboree. And that's how it all started there at NSU. So, and then now when I graduated from Norfolk State, you know, like, all right, that's it. I ain't doing the DJ. Nothing. I was, I'm done. Done. Right? Yeah. So, like, one day, all of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky again, KJ Halliday walked up to me, like, hey, man, um, he was highly recommended to us, you know, to do the show, which was back then, and one of two jams called Reggae Sunset. And Chase, the commander in chief of the base, used to do this show. And I'd be like, yo, you might do this show, whatever. Like, man, I ain't trying to do all this stuff right here. Because what actually happened was I applied for a position for the assistant engineer at the radio station. He said, yo, we know you applied for the assistant engineer, but you really wanted to do this show for us. I said, all right, man, whatever. So eventually what happened, I started doing the show. And the exact date was December 19th. Two, no, December 19, 1993 is when I started one of three jams, right? I got hired on the 17th and I started a show on the 19th, that Sunday. Chase came in, showed me how to run the board and everything. That was it. And I was doing the show ever since then on my own since 1993. And then eventually about maybe like four or five months later, I did get a job as assistant engineer there. So started doing the show, doing assistant engineering, Everything was going good, you know what I mean? And then the show moved from 6 to, um, six to um, 9 at night to in the afternoon, 12 to 3. So I was doing it. And I did it for years, you know, at one or two jams up until about 2011. Then I stopped because they changed my time from 12 to 3 to 10 to 12 in the morning. And ain't nobody listening. I mean, she said 12 to 12 in the afternoon, actually. And ain't nobody listening to no music at that kind of time in the afternoon, you know what I'm saying? People either in church, just waking up or something. So I stopped doing it, you know, and then eventually again, Doug called me from WNSP while I started out for us back in 1998. Mm -hmm. I heard you left one or three, I wanted you to come back here and start the show again. So I did it over there again, which I named the show the Caribbean Shakedown, which was a Caribbean Shakedown, one or three jams, when I moved to 12 to three for all those years. So I did that for a while every from, day. yeah, two to six every day. I mean, actually every Sunday over there. And, um, I did that for probably about two, two years, something. I can't remember how, many, how long I did it. Probably about three years, but they keep having problems with the transmitter and stuff and everything. So I say, you know something, that's it. I'm done. I ain't trying to do nothing no more with it. Again. Then Fonts, you know, was a DJ with one or three back in the day. And he, he came to PD and started like, hey, we want you to come back here at 92, you know, you know, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. So we're back at 92.1, the beat, which is part of one of three jams because I had radio on like four stations in that building. Yeah. So, and one of three was one of them and then 2.1, the beat was one of them. So then I came back there, they said you do the show from 12 to 2 p.m., no problem, cool. Then the show was kind of shot. So then they gave me an extra hour, 12 to 3. And I've been doing it ever since then. And then about last year, actually, uh, 2020, mm -hmm. in um, like early, like February, late January, I had radio, like did a whole massive, like cut and layoff across the board. And I happened to be one of them. Like they let, they let go a lot of people, a lot of DJs, engineers, people within the whole company. So I was one of them. I said, all right, cool, I'm done. Sunday's free, I ain't doing it again, no problem. Now, even a good, like, two days later, like, you know what I'm saying, DJB called me, like, hey, man, 
might like to move on Fresh Radio, you know, and, and do the show on, on Fresh Radio. I say, all right, man, you know? So it's like every time I try to stop playing music, it's like people always want me to step play music. Okay, to step back in. So what, what exactly is Fresh Radio for people who don't know what Fresh Radio is? Yeah, Fresh Radio is an internet radio station, man. They play everything. You're looking for it 24-7, and they play everything, man, from reggae, jazz, even country, whatever you want to hear, they play. And they've been over there for about over 10 years now, man. And, you know, DJB, he's the owner and the PD and everything. So they got DJB and the one for real. Yeah, sure. respect to DJB. Much love. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know and you know something else? The reason why I really do it is because I love playing music, right? I don't have to do it, but I like playing music. And honestly, to tell you the truth, if I don't do it, nobody else can really do it. So I try to do it for the community. You know what I'm saying? The Caribbean community. Because if I don't do it, they don't really have no, they don't really have no Caribbean music on the airwaves. You know, and that's why I really do it. I don't do it for me. I do it because, one, I like playing music, but I also do it for the community too, because I, I'm making nothing out of it. I'm not doing nothing out of it. I do it for love of money. I'm not for the love of the music. You know, I'm saying that money. Yes. Yeah. yeah, in in the money, man. And if you ever think like if you always think like that, think I always work yourself up, man. Do it for love of the music, not the money. And that's why I've been doing this so long. And not only that, you gotta stay humble, man. You gotta stay real, 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 real humble. Okay. Humble yourself, man. Yeah, because yeah. working for iHeart is a big deal. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I've been with them, yeah, because when I was, um, when I started out, it wasn't I had at first. Um, it was um, Reagan Henry. He, um, it was his broadcasting company back in the day. Then Claire Channel bought him out. And then I had radio, but Claire Channel out. Channel out, yeah. I'm saying, I know it's not I had radio no more. It's I had media. media Sacramento yeah. From. yeah, so it's like a bunch of politics and radio and stuff, man. So it's like, that's why I'm glad, like, you know, I'm an engineer and I do what I do. And because DJing is cool, but it's not a dependable source of income. You know what I'm saying? So if you're doing it for especially that, after this whole um yeah pandemic. pandemic. You know, yeah, 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 that, you know? yeah. You gotta Yeah. You yeah, gotta well, have, like I said, uh, plans. Yeah. yeah, man, yeah. So it's like yeah, I always have something to fall back on, man. So I do like I said, I love playing music, man. That's why I really do, you know, because you know, like everything I says I wanna stop, but people like you know, like we want you to do because you're really good at what you do, whatever. And if we don't have you, we don't have nothing. So that's why I really do for the community, you know. And so that's very important to me. You know I'm saying definitely. So that, that's the commercial side now. Tell the people about the hardcore side, the sound playing. How much sounds are you played on? And, and, uh, and everything you well, really, I'm by myself, you know, they know by your butt, you know, in the early 90s, that thing would change this international. Mm -hmm. So big up DC back in Jamaica. It was me, you know, Jason Walker, Ace, you know what I'm saying? And also Low, Sean Vega, aka Low. You know what I'm saying? The mighty Low, as Sean Powell would say, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I've been doing that for a while, man. Playing with the sound. And changes is a big sound, you know. Big sound, um, big sound. So what, what about know, the other sounds them that you play? And you um I rumor played, that you played a couple other sounds around the area too. Oh, well, only only song I played for a little bit um, was Eternity. I Eternity. played that for a little King bit. Eternity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I played King Eternity for a little bit. Um, probably for about maybe like a year or two or whatever. But then, uh, you know, I say, look, I went out. Well, I went spent all this time and changes this time and money and stuff. I might as well go and go back where I'm at and have all them foundations artists that we cut instead that you can't get no more. And probably done dead and gone. So I say, you know something, I build the sound. I'm gonna go back to changes, you know what I'm saying? Keep playing, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's That's always good to, to yeah. put all your effort into your own, your own yeah. stuff. But you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're the one that's building that brand for you and for and you yeah. telling people what you want to put out there to them. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like I say, you know, changes international and right now it's just really me, ASDC, and Low still too. You know, we're still going strong. You know, Low doing his thing. Is doing his thing and DC doing his thing down in Jamaica. So, like I say, once again, big up DC, you know. So, oh, and how, pretty... how has the music changed over the years, man? Like, um, you know, when I first came to Virginia, it seems like the mm -hmm. reggae scene had a, a bigger boom and then it it kind of faded and it got back again. And then it's, it's to me, it feels like it's fading again. How, how, how is the difference from back then to now? 
Well, I will tell you this here, man. When I first started playing in clubs back in the day, right? We had a bow, man. Ain't nobody started up. Everybody dancing, having a good time and stuff, right? But when the music started changing and all these new artists and stuff started coming up and start like, producing music like every week instead of every like month or something, Skilly, that's when the music changed. Exactly. That's when the music changed, man. Song of day. Yeah, exactly. You can't do that, man. Give it some time to Ew. do what you got to do. For example, look at like hip-hop and R&B and stuff like that, right? Or school, even some of the new R&B and stuff. They don't make an album or a song and everything every day or every week or whatever. But they give it some time to sink in and let people absorb it and stuff. You see coming from? Yeah. So when you're watching stuff. And then another thing is DJs. Like, for example, because of this software, so radio and all these new computer programs, everybody's a DJ now. You yeah. see? So pretty much it's like, what's the use? You know what I mean? So pretty much, if you didn't want to DJ and turn tables and everything, you know, you got DJ, yeah, but you you, you got an easy way out because people that had turn tables and stuff back in the day, we had to buy records. If you wanted to mix two of the same records, we had to buy two of them. Now with Serato, you could have one file that you get from any place, plug it in, you're good to go. And you could find music easily now on the web with no problem. But back then, you had to fish and hunt for your records, you know what I'm saying? So you, have, you really had to. So it's like technology, man. I mean, technology have its good parts and have its bad parts. And because technology is where we are, where we are right now, with all these new artists as far, and not just reggae, hip hop, R and B, and it's just like the, the, the time change, man. And you gotta change with the times. However, but I'm more like an old school person, so I'm not stuck in my ways. I accept change and everything too. But when I see change going the wrong way. I don't follow it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sometimes um, change is always good, but sometimes yeah. change, you know, sometimes the change when you see stuff going a certain way or a direction that you don't want to participate in. So yeah. You have to take yourself away from it. And then you have, you have, there's different eras, you know, you have, you have yeah. music where people going to like from this era, this era, and the younger you some will like yeah. this era of music more. So it all depends on which mm -hmm. era that you are, you were built in or which era that, that you prefer. Like personally with music, I love music from which yeah. era it comes from, but you know, yeah. you have garbage music from old era. You have garbage music from new era with me. Yeah. I, I try to pick in, in between of what's what I like for now and, and what sounds good to me. And then I move yeah. on to, to, to whatever is next. Yeah. But I, I mean, realize I like that the youths, right. The youths yeah. only like what they like and to stay, I guess, relevant in the environment of, of, mm -hmm. of club right now. It's a youth. It's mostly a youth thing unless we can find a way to to, to get uh, older um, dance hall and soca lovers and, and yeah. lovers to come out. You know, it's, it's a youth game. So we have to more likely keep up with them. Yeah. Well, you see, the thing is, too, is like don't change who you are. And see the, the advantages of people like me who've been DJing for a long time too. We could play the new music as well as the old music because we season. We have all the stuff from way back in the day. So yeah. we know how to play all the old music and we hear in the presence we could play all the new music mm -hmm. too. Yeah. But people that now starting to DJ have a hard time having to go back and remember songs and when they came out and that kind of stuff like that. Because if you, if you look at my files and my hard drive, right? And my music is by years. Like the dance song, Masoka, is like by years. So I know which year certain songs came out and da 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 da. As far as like my old school hip hop and R and B and everything, old school disco, you know, eighties. I'm talking about eighties. That's my favorite era. Eighties music. I listen to like Duran Duran, Red Mix, Alan Oates, Cindy Lapas. I listen to that kind of stuff. That's that's where I started DJ in that kind of era. You know, so I really like eighties music. You know, I you got me first to tell. You know, some DJs only listen to one set of music. You know what I mean? But to be a DJ, you listen to all kind of music and accept all kind of music. Definitely. You know, I listen to country, jazz, 80s, hip hop, R&B, old school freestyle, house music, you name it, I listen yeah. to it. Because yeah, you know, a real yourself, DJ have a way. Yeah, you can't yeah. rock yourself off. You got you to gotta be open yeah. to music. You know, yeah. Because yeah. And I, you might yeah. not like the people that you're playing for might love it. Yeah. And then see the thing is, though, I, I get typecast doing the Caribbean shade on, which is, you know, reggae music, you know, so what kind of stuff and, you know, Caribbean music, salsa, reggaeton and stuff. But I'm actually, 
I DJ, I play everything. Because back home in the club, Studio 54, man, we used to play everything back in the day. Some freestyle, like Stevie B, house music, like Liz Torres and stuff like that. Yo, it was off the hook, man. So I have an air for music. That's the music I, I started on and playing, you know, back in the day. So house music, freestyle, old school hip hop, disco. Because Zeus was a, you know, he, he was like a legend. He's still a legend back home. Like he, I'm not only this person he taught a DJ too. He ain't teaching nobody else except me. You know, so God bless. I want to ex, ex amount of respect to Zeus, man. He was the baddest DJ home, you know. He don't DJ like he used to no more, but I'm just taking the opportunity to thank him for teaching me what he taught me. You know what I'm saying? I think so, yeah. I think it comes with age, man, because I feel I feel like at points, even me myself, you fall out of love with not the music, but with 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 going out and yeah. playing the music. Because you always yeah. love the music, but the interaction with people and playing the music. I find myself yeah. falling in and out of love with it over the years. Sometimes it's a high, mm -hmm. sometimes it's a real low from you. You ever go through that? Yeah, yeah, all the time, man. Sometimes, like, you know, something, why are you even doing this here, man? And it's because it's like you got to be in the vibes to play the music number one. And you got to be in the vibes to be around the music and to be around the people in the music, you know? And you have it high as you have it low as you want to stop. But because you love music, you can always do, you know? And I'm okay. What I play music, I don't play music because I, I did my time. You know what I'm saying? I put in my years. This is gonna be this year gonna be 30, actually 31 years I've been I'm I've been in the radio, you know. Mm. So that's a long time. Oh, that's a long time been, a big deal, man. Congratulations. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Thanks, man. So and I've been playing music for a long time since 11 years old. So that's a longer time, you know what I'm saying? So I do get tired sometimes at doing it, but I love playing music. Sometimes I'm like wake up like nah, I feel like doing it. But because I like playing music. You know, that's that's what I like to do. It means like a, it's a hobby for me. It's, it's, so, it's like a real hobby. You know? That's a, yeah. It always you know it it's not about the money. It's more about just the love and enjoyment of exactly man. Even the exactly. music people and seeing their reaction and saying yo, I made it yeah, feel yeah. good for these last two three hours for the night. I made these people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it all depends on the environment and stuff too, man. Because you know, being a DJ, I've seen it all and I've been there. Man. Trust me, man. One of my biggest pet peeves, though, is when I'm in a DJ booth and people come to me, bothering me when I'm trying to play music, whatever, to yeah. actually request that stuff. Request that you know stuff. What I'm saying? <laughs> you know the irony is when people <laughs> really come to me and ask me that, I tell them to call you on Sundays and request, <laughs> request the song. I say, yo, call yeah. Roger Sunday on Sunday and uh, request yeah. the song for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind certain so requests and stuff. But when you had the same person keep coming to you, man, you know what I'm saying? I have a problem with that, you know. But, <laughs> not only that the song that they usually request and it's gonna get played anyway they just want yeah, you to play yeah. it way before it's time for it to be played and you know and then when you try yeah. to explain to them oh it's yeah. getting there they're like, but i asked you for it an hour ago well yeah you know, yeah yeah I, 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 I would I stop be... playing what i'm playing and play one song for you it's gonna come exactly. later just relax enjoy exactly with everybody else exactly and with that being said right if you're a dj right you just can't drop on a song man yeah i go with the flow you just can't play yeah. You know, it's a format to everything. You gotta be able to play it when you can play it. Fit it in. It might, might, it might not Build be as the same fix. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So people gotta understand that. And uh, you know, and along with that same pet peeve is when people come to me drunk and then trying to talk to me and then stuttering and then and around my spit, man. spitting at you and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 dude. Stop so, touching me, bro. Uh, yeah, man. you know, and that's that. You know, and that's 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 my only pet peeve, man. But I don't like because you know, like I said, when I see people enjoying themselves on the dance floor and stuff. That's my happiness. And and I actually tell you the truth, what keeps me going right now is when the artists them, when they put the song out, as soon as they put the song out, they cut me a dub, hey Bajo, here you go. They've been doing this for a long time, this is respect, here you go. So whoever do a new song, they cut a dub, send it to me one time. So that keeps me going to be kind of a wonderful feeling to hear your name, to your sound in a dub, man. Because that, that's like an accomplishment, like, hey, that's respect. Like I, I work for that. You know what I'm saying I used to look you forward. Know? I used to look forward to cutting songs, putting, you know. Yeah. It, yeah, it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah. You know yeah. What I'm saying? People people don't understand them as a big deal when people put your name in their song that they created or even your song. You know, it's a it's a big deal for me, you know. And I I have dubs and drops from almost everybody you could think about. I met people over the years. I met Supercat, Gregory Isaac, Dennis Brown. A bunch of legends, you know, um, as far as hip hop, Biggie Smiles, Buster Rhymes, Jay Z, Nas, a whole heap of artists. So it ain't just 
reggae music and so Caribbean music. I've been around, you know, I've been around everything, you know. So yeah, you've been in the been in the radio business for years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Into, you know. And then and then see, yeah, and then see being an engineer at the radio station, right? I used to see these artists when they come in there during the day for interviews and stuff. So I have autograph pictures and different things from all these artists. So it's, it, it, it have its privileges, you know, over the years, man. So I said, being doing this here for 30 years, man, actually 31 this year, you know, I I develop a lot, you know, that I, I learn a lot and I'm still learning regardless of how long I've been doing it, you know. So you never stop learning, man. You never stop learning. Definitely, you know? definitely. So let me ask you a question now, man. What you uh, think is the problem with the scenery of uh, the music in Virginia? You know, I like to ask everybody this situation, this question, like, what do they think? Is causing dance hall in Virginia to seem like it's either at an all time low, it's dying out, or it's just not being, being cooperative with it, with the DJs at, at the time. Cause you know, you have you have you have times when you know some good parties going on, and then you have times when the place is like, you're like, man, you know, we gotta get out of here, man. This place is, you know. Well, see the thing is though, is Back in the day, right, we used to do dances together. Mm -hmm. We had no problem, you know what I'm saying? We used to support everybody's dance, you know? Somebody doing a dance, we support it, we respect it, we don't do something in the same night or whatever. You know, it just depends on what it is. Then later on, you know, we support each other. And then, you know, one person do one thing, somebody else do something else. And in other words, we won't plan a big, big show and the same night you do something, like a show or something, you know? It's yeah. all that mutual respect. And um, I think, a lot of stuff gone out of the window, man. Because a lot of DJs nowadays don't respect each other. And that's why I stay how I stay. You notice me, you don't see me around nobody playing or nothing because I stick to myself. Because for one thing, I don't like confusion. I like staying one man. You, you, you're the same way too. Yeah. You know, you, you're the same way too. You know, you do what you gotta do away. and you keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Keep away from the, I try to keep away from the nonsense because my reaction to certain things. Yeah. Different and and most and, and, this, and the same thing here too, you know what I'm saying? It, it ain't worth it. But the thing is that everybody wanna be a DJ number one and also the same token too. There's no more loyalty and no more respect for each other, you know. It's like who could do what and who could do it when, you know what I'm saying? And everybody that's the problem right there. The chief, they know there's no Indians in my in my point of view. Everybody yep. is the hot DJ, everybody is a big DJ. Yeah. One yeah. night start here, somebody I'm, else start the same night here. Yeah. Instead of saying, yeah. you know. The yeah. place ain't big enough for us to be yeah. dividing up everybody. Let's yeah. come together. I'm gonna support your night. You throw support to my night the, the next yeah. night, and we support each other like that. Yeah. Well, you see, the thing is, too, to that too, it doesn't make a difference, right? If people who uh, dance on the same night, like if I reggae night, soaking or whatever, it don't make a difference because everybody have their own following. Mm -hmm. Santa from. So one DJ might have a set like crowd and follow him. Another DJ might have another. Crowd that follow him, the same coming from. So it doesn't make a difference if you have a dance one the same night because everybody had their own following. And that's just how it is nowadays because once you have your own following, you're good to go. The same coming from. Now, yeah, when you're it, my, my, my thing with that is the, the, the division of, of in this area that I don't feel mm -hmm. like, you know, people, a lot of people might disagree with me on this, but I don't feel like the, the community is big enough for, for, uh, a person to be doing competitive nights on the same night. I feel like it works better mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. it's a group, it's a group thing. It, it's a, we know, you got to know your market in like, just yeah. like business, you know, mm -hmm. um, McDonald's and Burger King might be in the same exact area, but you know why they're mm -hmm. in the same area? Because they know that there's enough people for both of them to work. But if there's an area that McDonald's or Burger King tests and realize that, hey, this area doesn't work out good for me. So there's no way I'm going to put my store within a mile of, of McDonald's or McDonald's yeah. within a mile of Burger King. It, it's yeah. just business sense. And these guys are in it to make money or in it to make yourself relevant. But you can't make yourself relevant with 40 people. That That's just, you know, if you're going to take... Yeah. I'll put your 40 people with his 40 people and his 40 people. Now y'all got some people in the party instead of your... You're 40 to 20 people on yeah. know, separating everything. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying too, but back again to what I'm saying, right? It doesn't really make a difference because everybody have their own set of people that follow them or whatever. So each night gonna do good regardless. But I see what you're saying as far as everybody putting their things together and making one. But 
honestly tell you the truth nowadays, man, everybody have their own following. So one set of person will support this establishment, this one set of person will establish, you know, support this establishment. So it just depends on what it is, you know, coming from. I mean, I get what you're saying. It's unity, you know, in one and everything. I, I get that, but the way how the market is right now, how everything is, and because we're in Virginia too, is like everybody, everybody just divided and everybody can go where they want to like go anyway. Their own thing. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody, I mean, yeah. honestly, to tell you the truth. Holes to look forward to. I, I realize yeah. that, man. Honestly, to tell you the truth, man, I have been all over DJ, man, as far as Toronto. Um, I mean, all over, you know, too much to list, you know, but I don't really talk about it because I don't really up on social media like that bragging about what I do and stuff, but I've been flown into a lot of places to do stuff and everything too, like weddings and parties and stuff. But when I go there, the whole DJ uh, scene is different from how we're in here, man. They, they treat you with respect. Uh, Definitely. It's, the place is, this place is big enough, right? So everybody could support everybody. So you might have a dance here, a dance there, a dance there, but everybody dancing is good because guess what? Everybody have their own crowd. However, if it's a big, if a big dance or something going on, everybody come together and pull out one dance together. So in front of that, it's a big difference. Yeah. It's a very big difference, you know. But like I said, it's all about support. Who, who's supporting you from who's not supporting you? You know what I'm saying? So I, I, me personally speaking, you know, I have I have my own following. I have people that follow me and stuff, whatever. You have people that follow you and everything. So everybody have people that follow you. But been doing this here so long, if people hear my name and stuff like, hey, budget it, I did whatever, you know, and that's nice and everything too, but I have people that don't follow me probably too, but guess what? They don't bother me because like I said, everybody have their own crowd that they follow and everything and to each their own, you know, I mean, I'm not here to make friends and stuff like that, whatever, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I've been a job. I'm here to supply people with music and entertain people and stuff forever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not so, everybody like tea or not everybody like soda. So, you know, they just got to go get what they like from wherever they like it at. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Wherever, wherever make you happy, but you want to hear your music and stuff, just going to support the cars and stuff, you know? And that's what it boils down to me. That's boils down to your preference and where you want to be and what you want to do. And that's, that's the only thing I could see as, you know, causing any kind of problems. It's just that everybody have their own little crowd, their own following and stuff and everything too. And at the end of the day, everybody, make it and go home happy you know what i'm saying i, I think virginia has a uh well in this area i can't speak for everywhere else but i know in this area i think we're in a critical place right now and we have an opportunity to build the music build the the the, the community um the caribbean community stronger but i think we've been missing a lot of catches with that man i think that it's so divided here and we're not big enough for the, the division what we have is like the division in New York and Florida, but we not yeah. we don't have that type of, of community to be so divided, you know. Well, you know, like I said, man, you have some people, I don't know with some people here and there because of this and because of that. At the end of the day, people can do what they want to do anyway. So I'm coming from and then being here in Virginia, you can see it more because it's a smaller state and in a 757, we're in a smaller area. So of course, there's too much crabs in the barrel, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I love the way how it looked. But once again, at the end of the day, Everybody gonna go where they wanna go. Everybody gonna support who they wanna support. So, yeah, ain't nothing you can really do about that. And it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. You know what I'm saying? It's the nature of the beast. Just gotta watch it. See how how it rolls out. See how yeah. everything pans out when it comes to that. You know. But I, yeah. I really love to see this area boom. So when we have, you know, I really love for people from DC and. Mm. Here by areas to hear that stuff going on down here and want to come down here and want to, you know, they want the scenery, they want that 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 vibe because it's right up the street. They might hear that certain things going on up down here because I have friends yeah, yeah. in DC and I tell yeah, yeah. certain stuff going on down here. They like, ah, yeah, don't come, you know, and it, and it, and it's and it's and it's not that way for the people down here because when they hear stuff going on up there, they all run up there to see what's going on up there, but they don't realize that they can make this place just like that too. But, you know, in everybody else's head, they, they think that the, they usually think that the home DJs are, are not as great as the out of town DJs. When, yeah. when yeah. you go to those same DJs place, yeah. and play, uh, yeah, 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 you're, you're basically outdoing them in their place. Or some of them don't even know yeah. before the DJ even make his mind up what he going to play. He already quizzing you on what he should play and what he shouldn't play. <laughs> so yeah. you know, they don't really know that. 
you know, you know the funniest thing about that situation, you know, um, first of all, I don't mind going to a dance something with other DJs and stuff like that too. But when you have too much DJs, I mean DJs on one bill, right. that's like a problem, man. That's like that's like that's killing me because I have been in there where I played music, right? And I somebody go back and play the same exact stuff I just finished playing or another DJ played. And like, what's the sense? Of, were you listening to what the person was playing before yeah. you came out? You know what I'm saying? So it's just crazy. That's what the problem is, having too many DJs and a bill. You know, ain't nothing wrong with it. But if you're going to do that, watch what the other DJ before you play. So you don't make the same mistake and play back the same tunes that the person played before you. And the, the craziest thing about that too is though, is the person that played it earlier, when the other DJ came out, they get a better reaction than the person that played it earlier, which is crazy. The same song. Yeah. Which which is crazy to me. It's coming from which is crazy. You know what it, I mean? <laughs> It goes back to a lot of things with preference, man. You know, you got people that are yeah. so, you, you got yeah. you got people that are so entangled with the division that yeah. they would want to go to a party, so they choose yeah. to not go to this party because this yeah. person that they deal with don't mess with this person. Or yeah. I even know, but for me personally, I know a lot of people that just don't go out because they mm. cool with this person and cool with that person, and when they go out. This person always saying, "Man, how you can't? No, you didn't go to my spot. How you go to that spot?" So what? They, yeah, 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 yeah. They sneak around, so they sneak here, or they don't go. Yeah. They don't go. You know, so that just mess up the whole vibe in the community for 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 people, man. And I think that you know, yeah, like a, yeah, to change that and and yeah, like I said, man, I pretty much stick to myself, man. I I I, I was glad my whole life. I don't really say much. I don't really do much. I just do what I gotta do and keep it moving. I mean, you know, so if, I, if I come to the club, I do what I gotta do. DJ, go home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever I gotta do, I go do it, go home. I don't like confusion, man. And I always been like that my whole life. It's like you said, less people know about you, the better off you are. You know what I'm saying? And I that's just my mind. Alone, I always try yeah. to be private yeah. with, with, with yeah. my life outside of, yeah. of what's going on because, you know, yeah. pe- people yeah. people like to assume things about people at times. And, you know, I just, hey. I just let them you know, run with whatever they want to run with at the time. And that's how I feel it, man. And how you look at it this way, too, as long as you know the truth and people know the truth or whatever, that's the most important thing. You could care less what anybody else say about you. You know what I'm saying? Right. At the end of the day, my old supervisor told me this a long time ago. They don't put money in your wallet and they don't take none out. You yep. know what I'm saying? So and my bills, so I could care what. Exactly. You right. Say what you want, do you want. I don't care because at the end of the day, I'm me. You know what I'm saying? You are you. You know what I'm saying? So it don't make a difference. So yeah, it don't, it don't, it don't trust me. It don't fear me. One big, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> As I say, yeah, zero fix given. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, that's my just favorite uh favorite yep. line, the frigs. Yeah, yeah, yep. zero fix given. Yeah. <laughs> but For man, real. You know, t- tell them about the station that you're on again before we close out the uh the yeah man, station. yeah man, cool. Yes, yeah, it's, it's you know, like I say, it's fresh radio, man. It's freshradio.com. Just check it out. I'm um, there every Sunday, 12 to 2 p.m. You know, with the Caribbean shake done, playing the best in Caribbean music. So once again, big up DG, I mean DJB and Cage and the whole crew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, Can they get it on much cell it. phones? Can you get it on mobile devices? Oh, yeah, 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 man. You know, it's, they have the link up there. Like I said, it's, it's freshradio.com. All you got to do is just go to follow me on, um, you know, on social media. DJ Bajo, that's DJ B-A-D-J-O-E, whether on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And then I always have the link up there. You can link it. And just check me out every Sunday. So just click on the link. It'll take you straight to the link on Sunday. So you can listen to the Caribbean shade. And then we play back on Wednesdays at 4 to 6 too. So if you miss it Sunday, you can catch it back on Wednesday 4 to 6. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then mm-hmm. from 4 to 6, and uh, they, they play they play multiple different type of, of music up there, different DJs. Oh, yeah, 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 man. Sometimes they play back old, like old mixes from back in the day from like uh, other stations and stuff like that. Like, you know, you know, back in the day, you used to record music and your tape deck and everything, yeah, or your little yeah, boom yeah. box. Yep. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff you listen to. It's like, it's like a real, real station of how we, a station should, supposed to be without all the politics and stuff in the music, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so yeah. that's that's one thing I like about it. You know, you can do what you want over there, you know what I'm saying? That's, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You know? I think that's a great, 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 great uh, idea and a great way to put music out. I think the world is traveling to internet. So yeah, you know, if you ain't and caught up and realize yeah. that's what's going on yet, you, yeah. you're gonna be late into it when 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 it get when it gets there. And and the craziest thing is too about that too, right? Um I, I've been in terrestrial radio for years, man. And I um you know, and honestly to tell you the truth, I have more people listening to me now 
over and it's fresh radio you know what i'm saying or i should say fresh radio but it's fresh radio.com and the website but i have more people listening to me now and follow me now because of the internet situation than i did on special radio because not all the time you're going to be in your vehicle or in your house without listening to the radio mm-hmm. but if you have your smartphone or smart device like a tablet or even a computer or laptop you can listen anywhere anytime so i'm coming from definitely so that's where it's at you know what i'm saying uh, so that's some then, great advice, man. So hey, I want to ask you this too before we leave. Should I ask yeah, you man. earlier? But uh, um, yeah. so a young DJ wants to 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 get some tutelage from you. Is is that mm. is that uh is that a thing? Can he hit you up on social media and come and like Bajo? You know, I want some. Yeah, man. I need you to help me. Yeah, like I say, I'm DJ Bajo on our social media, man. Whether it's Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and I'm. Um, I don't have a problem helping people, man. I, I talk to a lot of people over the years to DJ. So it's like a hobby for me. I, like I say, I, I like and I love doing it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't have a problem teaching people, man. If they're willing to learn, I'm willing to teach. You know? That's good. So That's good. I, 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 won't, I won't shut people down. You know, my, my head ain't that big not to help people out, you know, because I, somebody helped me. Zeus helped me to get me what spot I am. You know what I'm saying? Melanie started my career in radio and WNSB. I mean, KJ had me in the number one station, you know. For 18 years until I decided to leave because a principal because it changed my time from 12 to 3 to 10 to 12 in the afternoon. I that, yeah. that wasn't a work for me. And that, that's another thing, right? People don't have principles. You know People do anything just to just to get exactly. them out there and just to be recognized. You know, that's yeah. one thing I stand on. I, yeah, I have I have principles though. For me, listen to me. I walk away from the number one station in Hampton was a hot station. Dude. After 18 years, we got a principal. Mm. We got to change my time. You know, my principles is everything to me. I, I value my principles. You know, so you know my principles, guess what? Life goes on. You know what I'm saying? As simple as that. You know, while, you know? while talking to you, the idea popped up in my head where I'm going to talk to you off air about because I think we should get uh, people in Virginia some more, more reggae music. I think that people uh-huh. in Virginia like to hear reggae music they always i know for me personally people always harassing me and asking me for mixes cds songs yeah. and you know sometimes you just don't have the interest to do that type of stuff so i think yeah. we get together and we're gonna uh, come up with a, a a plan of how we can get people more reggae music that if they want to right now in the day they were sitting in the backyard like you and say i'm, I'm not going to work today but yeah, I want, to hear, I want to hear a nice little mix that they're able to do that. So we're going to talk about that off air, man. But Bajo, mad respect, yeah. mad uh, love for you coming through the uh, the program and showing us some love. You have been one of the guys that have been uh, very instrumental in, in, in your support of me launching my podcast and been giving me good feedbacks and telling me, you know, certain things on fixing and all this type of stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I really appreciate you coming through. You know, I really appreciate all the support that you have given me over the years outside of just the podcast, because I've hit you up for music over the years yeah, or two. So I just want to put that out there and say I appreciate everything that you've done for me so far. And I also appreciate everything that you did for the community, because without without you helping to build the community here, I couldn't have been a DJ here to profit or make a name, make a name around here because, you know, it, People like you uh, should get your respect, your flowers and stuff and, and, and your stuff like that for doing that type of stuff, man. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate you actually having me too, man. A big, and I respect the same way, you know what I'm saying? So it goes both ways, you know, just, it's just one-sided, you know. You know, you have respect for me, I have respect for you. And, Definitely. And if everybody have respect for each other, everything will work itself up. But my two biggest things, man, is I'm always humble and I have principle. Those two things I live by. Yep. Being humble, and principles, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's that's how I live, man. That's why I stick. Stand on, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm a man that, that uh, I pride myself in my convictions. I stand on what I believe. I don't fold on what I believe. I stand on it. If it means yeah, that I'm not going to get to where I need to go, and I often let that stop yeah. from where I need to go because you have you you have to be able to stand for something or you're gonna fall for everything. And exactly, man. You gotta follow you your own that, That's actually a true phrase. If you don't stand for nothing. You ain't, you know, you won't, you won't stand, you know? Yeah, you're far for anything, exactly. Definitely. But I yeah, mean, a lot, a lot of stuff, you know what I'm saying? People got to do, you know what I'm saying? So. Definitely. But like I said, man, thanks again for coming through. Really appreciate uh, that. You know, people, yeah. Mr. Anything Goes Podcast, I'm here with Bajo. 
the man from VI, come launch a VA, run the place for years. Yeah? The man said 31 plus years he's been here giving people music on the radio, broadcasting our culture to people that love our culture. And you have to respect that somebody that does it effortlessly, you got to respect that. You, you, know, you may not want to, but you have to respect a person that, that has been doing this deed for our culture and our community over the years. So big up the whole of VI, big up, big up the Virgin Islands, big up, big up, big up VA, big up all the soundmans, all DJs all around the all around the world from VI to VA. Big up on the self. It's the Anything Goes podcast. I'm here with Badger. The girls, them are always a ask, oh, you're bad, sir. You know? <laughs> it's your boy, Sean Peoples. I'm here, man. If you like the vibes, you like the movement, like, subscribe, share, comment in the comment section. Ring the notification bell to keep up with everything that we got going on, man. We got a lot of stuff going on. Jump in the community tab and vote in all the situations and issues that you see going on up there. It's just a better way to give y'all better content. So help us help you. Man. We're on the road to 5K, man. When we get to 5K, we're going to give away surprises and surprises. You won't be a part of that if you don't ring the notification bell. So, you know, it's all up to you and what you want to do. Help yourself or help me to give out less stuff. It's all on you. Hey, Bajo, like I said, Yo. man, really appreciate you coming through, man. Anytime, man. I appreciate you having me anytime, too, man. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely, man. We got to get you back up here again on one of the hot topics and talking about... uh all the nonsense and all the good stuff that we talk about up here. So. Hey, man, like I said, man, that's why I stick to myself. Like I said, two things. Humble principles. You know what I'm saying? That's how I stick. So, and I avoid confusion because guess what? Zero frig is given. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's how it goes, man. We're out of here. All right. Respect.